This video covers the material in sections 138 and 139 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intensive Course. And I'm going to group that material together and call this video Correlatives. And I'm going to add to what Hansen and Quinn has in those sections specifically. Those two sections are on Hansen and Quinn's pages 525 to 526, but they also point you to a full spread chart on pages 530 to 531, and I'm going to be covering the material in that as well. So correlatives are words that correlate with one another. They help you connect one part of a sentence with another. And they come in a lot of different forms and a lot of different categories. We're going to start with the adverbs, and Hanson and Quinn is covering those in section 139. In that section, they're talking about direct interrogatives. In the big chart, you'll also find indefinite adverbs. Back in the section, you'll have indirect interrogatives, and I'm also going to cover the indefinite relative, the specific relative, and the demonstrative form of the same adverb. So first, let me show you how this works with time words, and it will start to become clear. We ask a question when with pote. It's got its own accent, and it's a question word, and if you think about it, it's adverbial. Maybe you haven't thought about it before, but that's what's going on there. It's a direct interrogative adverb, which just means that it's a question word that's asking something about how a sentence is going on. If we want to have the indefinite form, we'll say pota. We don't know what time it is. We're saying something about time, but we're being nonspecific and indefinite. And so that means sometime or ever. And you've already learned that as vocabulary. If we want the indirect interrogative, if we want to ask, um, not directly but indirectly, she asks when something is happening, that particular when in Greek needs hopota. And that is the same word that we will use if we want to be indefinite and relative. She goes to the store whenever she needs some milk. That's indefinite, I don't know when, and it's relative. It's a way of connecting, relating the rest of the sentence in time. The specific relative is hota, when, and that is how we will do a temporal clause. So you've seen that before as well. And if we want to point to the time, we'll say tata. And I like to put all of these together and add more than Hanson and Quinn has in the sections because you can see some consistency about how these words are formed. If you see an auto word, it's probably about time. The pi version with an accent is going to be the question one. The pi version that's enclitic is going to be indefinite. The indirect question one is going to have a ha on the beginning of it. And the demonstrative one is likely to have a tau on the beginning of it. It's not completely consistent, but I hope you'll find it a useful pattern to follow. Let's see how much of it shows up when we look at adverbs that are about manner. So we'll get post to ask the question how. That's the pi version. The enclitic version without that accent but still a pi is the indefinite one somehow. To get the indirect interrogative we'll get hopos when, when we need to say she asks how they pass a law. Hopos is your word there. Now it's the same as the conjunction so remember to consider possibilities when you see the word hopos. We could also have it in a situation when we need it as an indefinite relative, and then it means however. The specific relative is hos, when it means as or how, and the demonstrative is hutos, which means thus or so or in this way. It's pointing to how. That's what demonstrative means. Of course, you can use ekanos to mean in that way as well. So, 
my little rules of thumb did there didn't completely stay consistent, but I think enough to help out a bit. Greek also has correlative adverbs talking about place. So we can ask, pu, where? And we can talk about it indefinitely, pu, somewhere. Of course, we can use that as a, as a particle that means, I suppose, but that's not what we're talking about right now. The indirect interrogative is hapu, for where. She asks where we were going. And the indefinite relative use of that would be wherever. We're going wherever we want. The specific relative, we don't get in Hanson and Quinn, but you can use who. So um, we're going to that lunch place where we went last week. That's a relative uh, clause way to use this adverbial idea of place. And then we can do the demonstrative eke, there, in that place. Now Greek, of course, also has these elegant little words that can mean from or towards a place. So we'll get pothen to ask the question whence. Of course, English, even though it used to use that elegant single word, now uses from where much more often. And if we need to say from somewhere in the indefinite version, we can use the same word but the enclitic form, pothen. The indirect interrogative is hapothen, from where, she asked from where we came. And then from wherever is the translation when we see this in an indefinite relative situation. Again, you won't see this in Hanson and Quinn, but we can use hothen for a specific relative situation and akathen or anthenden to mean from there in a demonstrative sense. But those words don't appear in Hanson and Quinn. You can see the consistent then all the way through though, and that has that separation idea. But if we want to go towards something, we're going to need poi, whither, is our old fashioned one word way of saying that. But in now we'll probably more likely say to where, and that's what poi asks. The enclitic version is indefinite to somewhere. The indirect interrogative, she asked to where you are going, is hapoi. And you can also use that for the indefinite relative, to wherever. And again, although Hanson and Quinn doesn't give it, there is a specific relative version, hoi. And demonstratives, you would use a kesa or anthada to there, to that place. But let's move on to correlative pronouns or adjectives. And this is covered a lot of it in section 138. The rest of what I'll show you is from the chart or other things to fill out our charts here. We're going to start with words about identity. We'll ask the question who or which or what with the direct interrogative that you've learned tis t. And I'm only giving the masculine nominative singulars here just to save a little bit of space. The indefinite version you've also learned tis t. That's enclitic and it means someone or something. The indirect interrogative you just learned in section 137, hostis. So she asks who is coming is going to be with hostis or Hatis or haughty, and if you want to say whoever comes is going to get a good meal, you will use hostis, hatis, haughty as well for whoever or whichever, whatever. The specific relative pronoun you already know that's hos, he, ha, who or which. And you also know three different demonstratives you can use when you need a demonstrative pronoun or adjective that's talking about identity. Hada, heda, tada for this person or this thing. Hutos, haute, tuta for this or that. And ekenos for that. Ekenos, ekene, ekena. So those are a lot of words that correlate about identity, about what or who somebody is, and you already know that all that vocabulary, but I'm hoping that this section 
shows you how they relate to one another and how they get used in different circumstances. We'll also get pronouns and adjectives that talk about alternatives. So we can ask Pateros, which of two? I'm not going to give you an enclitic indefinite version. There is one, but it's incredibly rare and it doesn't seem worth the time. The indirect interrogative follows the pattern and it's hapateros and it means which of two. Of course, this is an adjective or pronoun that can decline in all of the genders. So really we're talking about hapateros, hapatera, hapateron. And as an indefinite, it means whichever of two. And again, although it exists, I'm not going to talk about the specific relative, but there is the demonstrative when you want to point out one of two. You'll use heteros, hetera, heteron, which of course also means, depending on your context, the other of two. Our pronouns and adjectives that are correlatives continue. We can have ones that indicate quantity. So if we want to ask how much or how many, we'll use posos, posse, poson. The enclitic version of that is not in Hansen and Quinn, but it does exist. Posos, posse, poson. The indirect interrogative is in Hansen and Quinn, ha posos, ha posse, ha poson, when we need to say that she asked how many eggs you bought. Um, and then when you need it in an indefinite situation, when you see it there, it's however much or however many. The specific relative, she bought as many as she needed, is hosos, hose, hosan. And the demonstrative is tosutos, tosaute, tosuta, which means that many or so many. We can do the same thing when we're talking about the quality of a thing. We can ask what sort or what kind with poyos, poya, poyon. The enclitic version is not in Hansen and Quinn. If we wanted to say some sort, we'd see something like poyos. The indirect interrogative, she asked what sort, what kind of man he was, is hapoyos. Uh, in the feminine, hapoya, in the neuter, hapoyon. And then indefinite translation is whatever sort or whatever kind. The specific relative is hoyas, hoya, hoyan, which can mean which sort as well. And toyutas is the demonstrative. So such a man, such a thing, that sort of man, toyutas, the feminine is toyaute and the neuter is toyuta. So now you have this video as well as that big chart on pages 530 to 531 to help you sort out your correlatives and which kind of adverb or adjective or pronoun you're seeing in a particular situation.